We're happy to announce that Channel 3 is 35 years old today. It was first WRGP-TV when it signed on May 6, 1956. Now today, Willard Scott on NBC's Today Show had a special greeting for our station, and we're happy to share it with you now. So I oh, want to mention WRCB, great station, Chattanooga, Tennessee, one of the great NBC affiliates. They've been with us for 35 years. They've got the biggest miniature railroad, I think, in the world down there. Remember the Chattanooga choo-choo? Happy birthday. This All right, Willard. Of course, he was here with us for Riverbend a few years back, so he's quite familiar with our town and our station. We're happy to introduce to you today two original members of the Channel 3 staff from 1956, Wayne Abercrombie, who was a producer and director and a jack-of-all-trades, and Roy Morris, who, in my opinion, was Mr. Channel 3 for decades, and it's good to have you both here today. Thank Thanks you, David. Good to be here. And I, as we mentioned with Chris a few moments ago, things have really changed, haven't they, Wayne? Unbelievable at the technology these days. We were, as you said, kidding with Chris about the way they did the weather back then and hang the sponsor's card up above the, what we call just a blackboard, and later in big time we got some moving symbols to hang on there and a revolving wheel on the camera to make them move a little bit, but that was the high tech of those days. And things uh, certainly today is hard to keep up with. Now, Roy, we talked on the phone the other day. You said it's like yesterday. Tell me what you remember about when Channel 3 first went on the air 35 years ago. What was the, the feeling in town like? Oh, it was a great feeling. Uh, it was scary. You know, it was brand new, something for us. Uh, I was working at WAPO Radio for Raymond Patterson, who was the first owner of Channel 3, and it was, uh, it, it, it was, um, it was a carnival atmosphere. It was every day. Well, these days, when a new radio station or TV channel goes on the air, it's no big deal. There are no. 20 TV stations, 30 yeah. uh, radio stations. But then, Chattanooga had only one TV station. That's right. And when I came here in 1950, there were five radio stations and no television. And then 54, Channel 12 went on. The 56, we went on. And a year or two later, Channel 9 went on. So in 1956, people here were watching Channel 12 or the snowy signals from Atlanta? Mostly right. snowy signals from Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have some pictures we want to share with you today. And Roy and Wayne have been kind enough to bring some photographs from their collection. And the oh, first no. one we're going to show you takes us back to the Roy Morris show of the 60s. And I have a feeling this was at the height of the Beatles craze. Absolutely. And we see Roy on the far left, uh, unmistakably. And there you see Wayne Abercrombie fronting the group. Who are the other two guys in this? It's Irv Prevo right behind the myself and Bill Myhan, who was one of our cameramen on the right there. So you performed in the studio. Yes. Uh, and I can only imagine what it sounded like. <laughs> we did the Beatles uh, uh, music, a couple of three of their numbers, and uh, pantomimed them, of course. And this group came so popular, Roy. If you remember, we were getting requests from all over Alabama, Georgia, wanting us to come down and open supermarkets <laughs> and you name it. We, we were, became real popular. But much like Beatlemania, it did eventually fade. Oh, yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> I'm sure Thank goodness. Back. <laughs> all right, let's take another look at one of the pictures that Roy and Wayne. This is early Wayne Abercrombie. I said to you out in the lobby, you look like you're about 13 here. This was the uh, first year? Yeah, that was right after we went on the air. An interesting note here is the equipment that we had in those days. This, of course, was still in the black and white days before color and before videotape, but that was the main console, and I'm sure the fellows back here in your studio now get a kick out of seeing what we had to operate with, and as opposed to all that magnificent equipment back there now. But that's right. That's, all right, uh, let's take a look at some more here. Now, there, the gentleman in the middle is certainly a, a local legend, Mort Lloyd, who was a longtime newscaster here. And was this, Roy, was this the Channel 3 news airplane? Well, it's one we uh, rented once in a while, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. That's something we'd like to have today, as yeah. a matter of fact. And let's see what else we have. Our next picture. This is probably my fondest memories of Channel 3 from growing up. The live telethons for the March of Dimes from the Memorial, Memorial Auditorium. Yeah. My claim to fame, Dave, was that I worked the entire telethon from sign on to sign off, never left the stage. And many big stars came into Chattanooga. Big and the picture we just saw, Peter Marshall, Roy Clark, there on the far left, and there's Roy leading the song, <laughs> yeah. urging people to call in out front. Gwinella Hutton's in there on Hee Haw. On the far right from mm -hmm. Hee Haw. I sure miss those days. Let's take a look at some more pictures now. Tell us about this one. That was in the middle of Broad Street downtown. We were doing a, ro a remote on a parade. You know, David, Channel 3 was the first television station in Chattanooga to have remote facilities. Mm -hmm. We did broadcasts from everywhere, all over. I did 39 weeks of a bowling show, and I didn't know anything about bowling, but a show called Penbusters, and we did it live from the bowling lanes every Saturday. Well, now these days, we take our live truck or our satellite truck, and we aim our signal and snap, crackle, pop, we're on the air. How long did it take to set up a live shot back then? About four days. Considerably longer, <laughs> you're right, Roy, because 
then it <laughs> involved taking the big uh, microwave dishes that we had in those days, and we would uh, go out and establish line of communications to the tower, and like you say, sometimes two or three days ahead of time, and where now you can go out with your truck and zip up and be on the scene with a fire or a breaking story momentarily. Well, we didn't have that luxury in those days. It was always a three or four day adventure. And we have one of those live productions on tape now. We're gonna roll another tape. This is a boating show, as I recall, from uh, 1960 we're going to see on tape here. This was Tommy Bartlett's ski show. Was this done live on Channel 3? Yes, up in there you see some of our old equipment and some of our camera people at that time. There's Bob Quattlebaum, who used to be here, and there's the old microwave dish that we had uh, transmitted to the mountain. There's Lee Jackson, who uh, used to be here. And still in our, town. There's our crew and some more shots of actually carrying it live there from up at Chickamauga Dam when the old restaurant was there beside the uh, water. How about and there's that? the crew again. As you can see, we had no mobile unit. We just stacked everything out on the sidewalk and stripped the studio of all the equipment and, and uh, carried it up there. And everything was live, just like to, yeah. on this show right now. If we make a mistake, you folks are going to know about it, and that's what I liked about it. We had, see, we didn't have a network 24 hours a day like you have mm -hmm. now if you want it. Uh, we had uh, three or four shows back to back, for example, from noon right at this period of time. From noon until one every day, we had a show called Midday with the Willis Brothers. Then my show from 1 to 1.30. Then from 1.30 to 2.30, a show called Holiday for Housewives with Jim Neighbors and uh, Jack Wiedemann. All right, and we have a couple more pictures I think we're going to try to get in here. Let's see, we got some more pictures. There we go. That's, that's the uh, 16th uh, anniversary. 19 years ago. Uh -huh. At least you had a cake then. I don't think anybody <laughs> brought us a cake today. <laughs> no cake. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have anything else? Are there other pictures? There we have. That's the eighth anniversary there. And I see Don Fisher, <clears throat> yes, familiar sir. face there on the right of the screen. O.J. Bailey. Sylvia Bunch standing next to Don. She still works here at Channel 3. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of great longtime employees here we're so proud of. And just looking at your collection of TV guides that you brought in from 1956, a couple of notes I wanted to share. Back in 1956, it said Channel 3 will soon begin televising live wrestling matches from the studio <laughs> on Macaulay Avenue. That went on for a while. It sure did. And there's another note in here. The proposal by WROM-TV Channel 9 to move its transmitter from Rome to Lookout Mountain would soon be approved. Whatever happened to that station? I don't know. I Did it come to town? I think, <laughs> I think sure. they're, they're yeah. out here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. But that was going on in 1956. And we are proud of our 35-year history here at Channel 3 and proud of these two gentlemen who helped get it off the ground 35 years ago today. And we're glad that you're still watching us, Wayne and Roy. Well, thank you. And we want to thank Irv Prevo for furnishing some of this material you saw today. Mm -hmm. and Mr. And Trophy, Irv Prevo. Yeah, Prevost. there you go. Right. Thank you for not asking me how old I am, David. <laughs> I wouldn't think of it. I wouldn't think of it. But both of them started when they were mere children. Right. And we'd like to thank you again both for being here. Our pleasure. And thank you for sharing our anniversary with us. We have another gentleman coming along. He's celebrating the publication of his first book, George's Greengrocer. And he's got a recipe on the way too. That's coming up next, live at noon. Give him the business. That's metal. Support. Yeah, that's uh, Gatlin. Is that what? Yeah. Yeah, uh, sure who, who shot this? Art this Art wasn't the Art first Art show Art that we did at the lake. Huh? This wasn't the first show we did at the lake because they didn't have those uniforms. Yeah, no, we got uniforms. We got uniforms the next year. We thought maybe yeah. it looked neat with everybody being in. I wonder a, where he's at now. In the white uniforms. I remember talking to. Uh, uh, I think Mr. Burke about. Finally wore out. Uh, really? I don't know. I don't know what happened to mine, Roy. If I get this, I know, get I know this I know to your uh, leader. We had don't call you. All right. You ought to call tonight. Your writing is, let me know, okay? Okay. You find I'll out. I'm trying to find out. Okay. I know where. Uh, good to see you again, Dad. I know where. Uh, let's see, what's the date? Today is what? 14th, May the 14th, 1991. Few days. My gosh, and you still look, still look young. A few days yeah. after our 35th Channel 3 anniversary. Yeah. We got together at Earth. That is right. And we got so. Lee. Lee Jackson. We got Dooley Lowe. Irv Prevo. Hi. Yeah. And Bill Myhan. Oh, Bill. And Bill Master uh, Roy. Yes, sir. And you don't see me, but you hear me oh, talking. Hold, hold on. And, and let me have the camera, and I'll shoot you and get you in the shot. You're recording. I'll say now. something because I'm taping. Now you can zoom in and out with a I don't order in front of that. that. You're too close now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about zoom out, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Show them all my gray hairs there and everything. All right. All right, you guys. 
We're going to get together another 30 years from now. We're going to try. We'll have our 65th <laughs> anniversary. Do you there. mind if I pass up on that one? Uh, uh, you going to pass, Lee? Yeah, I'm going to pass. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll really, get together again. It's been a great time, that's for sure. Looking at all the uh, old stuff in here, we're going to get some shots of it. Trouble okay, is, some guys. of that old stuff looked young to me. 